Good day everybody, this is the Ecclesiarch here, back with some more Warforge. And today I'm going to be presenting together with BJ the Brave, but he's going to be doing his perspective on his own channel, Episode 5 of Forge Clash. So we're delivering a quick episode back to back with the other, because we have not been doing these for a while. And today it's going to be a very interesting matchup between Uriel, Ventris, and the Swarm Lord. So BJ is going to be playing for the Swarm Lord, and I'm going to be playing for Uriel Ventris. Now, this is a very, very interesting matchup because Swarm Lord right now, you probably know, is very powerful, and Ventris and the Ultramarines have also received some interesting buffs. And this is a very tricky matchup that requires you to play very, very carefully on both sides. So, without further ado, let's first take a look at my Uriel Ventris deck that I shall be using against BJ. So, if you take a look, overall, we have a pretty low curve at the beginning, like we're mostly focusing low units, but we have some higher energy units towards the late game as well. So, let's take a look at the deck once more and let's discuss. Now, Tactical Insight, I doubt needs any explanation, because this is one of the best cards for the Ultramarines, and if you're playing without this, well, I think you should not, so it's a very, very good a thing that helps you get your tempo going, will help you play more cards and help you trigger Codex multiple times. I'm going to have the Scout here because that extra damage at plus the ability to trigger the Codex when you're one energy off is very crucial on someone like Ventris because he does not have the flexibility of Varro Tigurius to decide how much energy he wants to spend uh, when it comes to... Uh, triggering his codex and on top of that this is also a very important thing because Ventris starts with an extra card so small cost units that are going to swarm the board are in general very good on him that's exactly why we're go why we're going to be running uh, firstborn as well now firstborn is actually pretty good against the swarm lord because even though it has three hp it's gonna deal one damage instantly and for some reason if the swarm lord cannot attack it next turn you can do a ranged attack on the swarm lord and take only one damage in return and that damage can really stack up plus you really want to be hitting those Gene Stealers as well. Heroes Respite for extra card draw because you need something to draw more cards on Ventris else you'll run out of steam. Humanity Shield, no explanation needed. The best Ultramarine is legend legendary, most probably. Uh, just buys you that extra turn. And against the Swarm Lord, it's uh, uber powerful because uh, you will be able to survive the combo if you see it coming. Point Blank Shot for burst and card draw once again. Cycle. I got one Primaris Reaver for some uh, flank and uh, quick removal for the early game. And the Inceptor, of course. And Inceptor in general is super good. By the way, I'm making it sound like this is an anti Swarm Lord deck. Well, it's not. It's a general good uh, Uriel Ventris deck. But I'm kind of discussing it uh, in terms of the matchup with the Swarm Lord. Now, Inceptor was always nice. Then it received a nerf. But now it received a hefty buff of the HP. And this is very deadly against the Swarm Lord in general because. On energy 3, you can just drop this and have it on the board, and the Swarm Lord really can't do shit against it, because he has very low uh, ranged attack. So, very, very good unit. Sterngar Sergeant, once again, this is like a big boy version of the Firstborn, so certainly something that um, we want to have there, because of that Codex, and the am potential amount of damage that it can deal. AoE, not AoE, sorry, Death from Above for Burst, as well as a bit of a removal tool. Very good on Ventris, because mostly we're going to be playing aggro. Honor Guard doesn't need an explanation. Four energy, four five, already pretty good Vanguard. Storm Raven for AOE, very necessary against Orcs, Scarabs. Uh, combos really well with Ventris ability. Can deal with Gene Stealers very well as well. We got Double Heart Removal, Inspired Retribution. This is going to be key because we need to deal with the armored troops of um, uh, the Swarm Lord. Primaris Impulsor, double copy of Primaris Impulsor is going to be pretty important because. Uh, swarming the board with Ventris is very, very uh, crucial, if you ask me in general, because if you think about it, uh, the Impulsor is just really good um, when it comes to, like, when it comes to survival, because look at that health, right? It has six health, and now it's very hard to remove compared to what it was before, and if you have some tactical insights, you're definitely going to have a better time. Then we have the prim primary Judishar, uh, or because, like, this card is key when it comes to stunning your opponent and keeping those invisible units in place actually what you could do is you could ditch the reaver if you want and get double uh 
uh, these guys because the stun is super important for sure in this matchup. Uh, then we have double Inceptor Sergeant because of that flank and removal ability. And we have the Epistolary Librarian because of that shield and codex. So overall, this should give us a very nice... Um, uh, this should give us a very nice capability to just push and just, you know, uh, deal with the Swarm Lord through sheer aggro and sheer destruction. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. And I can't wait for you guys to see how it goes. All right, gentlemen. So we're off, off to game number one. And we are going to see just how this rolls. Now, the Swarm Lord matchup, honestly, a lot of times really depends on... What kind of Swarm Lord is the person running, right? For Ultramarines, it's very dangerous if they are running uh, the Stealth one. Now, since he's going second, he's going to have a big unit out very early. So, I'll keep my Retribution in there. Primar Primaries in Scepter, by the way, is one of the best things that you can play. Uh, you can drop early on. And by drop, I mean just drop it. Like, that's all. Okay, we got a very interesting thing here. You know what we can do? We can do this. That's a lot of damage. And by the way, we are absolutely the aggro in this matchup. Because the more the game drags on, the more he wins. So we already brought him down to equal HP to us. Which is absolutely amazing, man. That's like exactly what you want to be happening. That is like absolutely necessary. Okay, so we play the Inceptor 100%. And don't forget to attack with this, by the way. The two range damage is a big deal. It's a big deal. We don't want to miss out on any damage. This is exactly where the Carnifex or something like that might come out. So, this is a very dangerous turn. This is a very dangerous turn. This is where it might swing, actually. So, the uh, Inspired Retribution here is a bit of a pickle. Because I don't have it next turn. Now, on the other side, on the flip side, let's say like that. If he does not have Carnifex this turn, I can just drop the Honor Guard and I'm feeling really good about myself after that, right? Because then whatever he drops get Inspired Retribution, unless it's a Stealth. If it's a Stealth, he might just one-shot us later on, so it's kind of scary. So, he's probably thinking whether or not to do the uh, cost reduction right now. Carnifex is terrifying, man, because... Oh, okay, nice. Because if he does Carnifex, I really don't have anything to take it out with, even if I unload on it, so it's pretty scary. Anyway, Honor Guard, we go here, and we go here again. So we gotta be as aggro as possible. No doubt about that here. Now, if he drops a big unit, like a Screamer Killer or something, we get a very big boost of... Uh, uh, initiative. Ah. That's the correct move. Now, here's the question. Do I want to aggro this? Yes, I do. Because he has one ranged attack and next turn he still doesn't take it out with the melee. So, we do it like that. Hero's Respite is very timely. Ooh. So, finally the Venom Trope shows itself very well. Fortunately, we can deal with it. Uh, but first, let's draw some cards. Let's do it like this. Do it like this then.
If he plays Broodlord, we play Epistolary Librarian instantly. I think in any case we play Epistolary Librarian. This is such a good drop in general. Nope, it's the thingy. I think either way we played Librarian. Is my blade. Wisdom, my bullet. Cause unless he has another uh Venom Throw into flank, it's not gonna be good for him. It's such a cool card. Yeah, he has to trade into that, undoubtedly. Now, he should not make that mistake. He should trade 100%. Okay, that's cool. That's, that's a cooler move. That's for sure the cooler move. Once again, correct that he did not just go face with it. There we go. Now that we have him on the defensive. Don't forget, he can still one-shot us from 30 HP, so we gotta be very aggro. The fact that we're keeping him on low HP is a big deal. And we do have lethal at this point. So what could he surprise me with right now? He could play Broodlord and... No, oh, no, nah, Gene Stealer is... Gene Stealer doesn't work. Gene Stealer is not gonna work. There we go. So, this is an example of where we successfully beat down as the aggro. Uh, he didn't get any early game things, apparently. He did not drop the Gene Stealer, Stealer early or anything. I think... Uh, I think he just didn't get lucky with his draw. Maybe he mulliganed un in a very unlucky way. But in any case, we got a lot of answers there. And we really did manage to keep him on the defensive there. Which is usually what you want to do as Uriel Ventress. That's how you want to do it. Let's go. And this time he's going second. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't like it when he goes second. This is a beautiful hand, by the way. I much prefer for him to go first. Swords of Chaos with me. Okay, let's start. Inceptor next turn, like as always. There goes the digestion pool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now we're in trouble. Yeah, I have to do this. Because if I don't do that, I'm gonna be in some serious trouble. Carnifex is gonna be so much of a problem, man.
Okay, that's nice. That's actually nice. He most probably has to buff it. Oh, god damn. That is not good. That is not good, boys. That is not good. Uh oh. Okay, might, might as well draw a card. Oh boy, that Carnifex is gonna be such a big trouble. As I said in num game number one, the scariest thing that can happen to an Ultramarine player is a energy turn three Carnifex. Ugh. Well, scariest thing against the Tyranids, that is. Because there's worse things that can happen, for sure. Boom. Okay, that's nice. Tactical insight is pretty good. Okay. Yeah, that's GG. That's already a good game. Or maybe not, actually. There's no hiding from Ultramar's wrath. Maybe not. Maybe not yet. I actually know it's GG. <laughs> he can do the um, he can give his warlord power, bloodthirst, and he can just take me out if he has it. That is hive commander, and there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Ah, there it is. There it is. Jesus. Ooh, that hurts. The broodlord. Ooh, scary. That's that's some scary stuff, boys. That's some scary stuff. Ugh. Yet again, we are back against the Swarm Lord. We don't want the Epistolary. We don't want the Inceptor. We might want to have the Impulsor, though. Yeah. Inspired Retribution is a must, because once again, the Carnifex play. Swords of Chaos with me! Okay. No inceptor for me, huh? Okay. Shot by shot, we will purge the galaxy. All right. Carnifex. Oh, the goddamn dinosaurs, man. Uh -huh. So, I got a lot of Inspired Retributions, though, which is pretty good. Let me just drop the Honor Guard on, on him, just in case. See what he's thinking. All right. Uh huh. So that's how he chose to do it. I 
I'm actually surprised that's the way he chose to do it. Wonder if he's gonna buff it up again. Yeah. It's gonna get inspired retribution, I think. Yep. I hope he I hope he does the right thing and goes face. Absolutely, correct. That's how you should do it. Uh you know I think I'm still gonna drop this over the retribution because it sticks. Now, if he drops a Broodlord right now, I think it might be over. So, actually, if you take a, if you if you look, that's kind of what it depends on. If he can get the Carnifex follow up with the Broodlord and the Bloodthirst, then he can win. If not, he's usually in trouble. It's pretty funny, but that's how it works. Ah, I see, I see, I see. So that's the way, huh? There's no hiding from Ultramar's wrath. Yeah. Let's do it like this. Hope to get a stun or a front line. Nope. No brood lord, no brood lord, no brood lord, please. I have how much damage on the board? 9... 13. Not enough. Thirteen, I mean, including... The, ooh, Carnifex, okay. Wow. Not something I expected. I think that's a correct play, actually. And ironically, I think that's a correct play. Taking cover. Enemies in range. I'm not going face. Uh, if he has Bloodthirst, I gotta be careful. Do I actually have dead inspired retributions in my hand? There's a lot of things he could do. He could do the Zoanthrope right now. And then attack with the Carnifex. Uh, okay. Alright. Screamer Killer. Ooh. 
All right, I finally actually drew humanity's shield. <laughs> In all of these games, <laughs> this is the first time we got it. Which is really good, because that's going to save me. Humanity Shield is actually a key card, as I've mentioned in this matchup. You absolutely need to have it. Okay, that's good. He's fishing. Zoanthrope. Yep, GG. Who? Intense one. Intense one for sure. But we stopped the Carnifex this time, which is absolutely fantastic. It's not easy, but it's doable, guys, as you can see. So, yeah. There you go. There's the Uriel versus Swarmlord matchup for you boys. As you can see, it's absolutely doable for the Ultramarines. But it really does depend on what kind of a curve do the Tyranids are going to pull. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed those three games. I would say they were very, very interesting. I think you saw what were some of the most uh, crucial points there, which is the Energy 3 Carnifex threat, which is the Broodlord threat, and which is our ability to just keep some of our troops on the board, abusing the Swarmlord's low-ranged attack. So, I, think you, I hope you learned something from this uh, matchup. I hope you got some insight on how to play from both sides, and, you know... Please, once again, write in the comments what is the next matchup that you would like to see. We already have a couple in mind, uh, according to your suggestions. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Great game to BJ. Uh, GG, well played. And thank you very much, guys. I'll be seeing you during the next episode.